over the years, I have found that there are certain hunts that you just absolutely look forward to. To me, Alaska brown bear has always been one of them. In fact, Alaska brown bear was my dream hunt. And four years ago, well, I was able to go up there, and it was one of the most incredible experiences you could ever imagine. Everything I hoped it would be, well, that's what it was. Flying in on a super cub, seeing the tundra, and then when you spot those big brown bear, it is really a trip like no other. I mean, you are hunting one of the biggest predators out there and you are going up against them and it is amazing. Now, one of the things that I love is the fact that well, you only get to do this once every four years. This truly is a hunt of a lifetime and I thought, I'll be lucky if I ever get to go back up there. Well, this year, my chance came about again and I was headed back to Alaska. But this time I was bringing Ben Bear Shield along with me and we were both so excited. I would say it's probably like the top of my list, brown bears. Um, I was super excited. I mean, the anticipation was really high and to say that I guess I was really excited would be an understatement. Now this is Ben's dream hunt. This is something he had always wanted to do. And for me to be able to bring someone along and make that happen, it is an awesome feeling. In fact, it might even be more exciting than when I'm the one doing the hunting because you're able to see everything through someone's eyes their very first time through. I kind of knew what to expect, which helped with packing, but it was one of those things, getting ready for this trip, I knew it was gonna be a trip of a lifetime. The peninsula is a unique place. Uh, it's a tough piece of terrain. Walking on it is like being on a different planet. And so it slows you down a lot. Anytime you're in pursuit of a bear, you can know that he can walk about twice as fast as a human can run. So you gotta stay out ahead of these bears. And with the optics that we have, that's the key to our, our successful outcome. The Alaska Peninsula, it is a rough area. The weather is tough, the terrain is tough, the predators are tough. You need to be tough to get up there. And I knew we had one of the best guides you could ever ask for. I was gonna be hunting with Ryan McHugh once again, and he is phenomenal. In fact, the last time I was there, well, he was my guide, and we got two beautiful bears. Now, a big part of an Alaskan brown bear hunt, it's the glassing. You are gonna spend days and days and days glassing and sometimes you don't see anything but you're constantly picking things apart and you're learning to deal with the weather. The weather is your biggest challenge. The weather is constantly changing and it can get downright cold. So you've got to be tough enough to get through those elements and make it and when you spot a bear then it's game on. Now a lot of these trips are hard no matter what, but this trip, totally self-filmed. I'm gonna be filming Ben on this. Hopefully we have some luck and I'm a good cameraman once again. Been years since I was a cameraman, but it's gonna be fun. And then if he gets a bear, I'll be self-filming my hunt and he'll be helping film too. So gonna be awesome. We're up here on the Alaskan Peninsula. Weather is crazy, changes by the day today. We're covered up in snow, but I think it's going to be a good thing because we're going to be able to spot those bears much easier. Every day we go up on the hill. We've got a really good spot above camp where you can see for literally five, six miles. And uh, we get up there and we just start glassing. So Ben was going to be up first and we glassed and we glassed. We had wind, we had rain, we had all the different things, but all three of us became a great team. Ryan, myself, and Ben, we were out there putting in the time and just taking in the sight. It is an awesome, beautiful place to be. And you know what? The hard part is sometimes things don't go how you want. Sometimes the weather doesn't cooperate, but you need to stay strong, to stay focused, and keep after it. That's the key to Alaska just enjoying every moment of it, whether you have bear in front of you or not. Sportsman's Alliance, our heritage, our fight. Protecting hunting from coast to coast. 
Did you know that sportsmen and women contribute nearly 8 million to the economy every single day, adding more than 2.9 billion every year for conservation? Just another fun fact showing how sportsmen and women are helping make a difference. Now where we were hunting, we were on the Alaskan Peninsula. Now the Alaskan Peninsula, it's huge, but we were up at the very top, very close to Lake Iliamna, and what was good about that? Well, it's nice and close, but a lot of people simply overlook it because you're not by the coast, you know? They think these bears, they gotta be by salmon, they gotta be on fish, and here's the thing. Before bears go to hibernate, they need sugar, and they get sugar with all the berries, the tundra, full of berries and we knew that all it would take is just one of these big bears walking through our valley and if we spotted them we were definitely going to be able to get on them. Like with anything a lot of sacrifice equals one big benefit but physical agility is important. Conditioning is huge. If you're in good shape, you're going to have a better time. You're going to probably have a higher rate of success out here. And it's something you have to be ready for. You don't ever want to quit. And as I've said before, you can be your own worst enemy. You never want to get down. Just stay on top of your game and never quit glassing. little update. We have been out, we have been glassing non-stop and it has been absolutely tough hunting. The weather has been brutal but we're putting in our time. Nobody's given up and I know this area can hold big bears. Now a big part of it is just staying strong enough to get out there and to glass and I know that patience will hopefully pay off in the end but every day you just look around it is so beautiful and I love it. Uh, I would say the weather was uh, bipolar, to say the least. I mean, we had a couple of good days where the sun was out and it was nice, and there was days where we were stuck in the tent for two and three days at a time. So it seemed like uh, once you caught some good weather, you really wanted to run with it and get out and get some hunting in. The way our setup was in Alaska is we had our tents down in the alders. Now it's important to really make sure that you're somewhat protected. The winds, they can get up to 60, 70 miles an hour on the tundra, and if you're out in the open, well you will literally have your tent ripped out of the ground. So we were using bomb shelter tents, we had everything we needed, Ryan does such an awesome job of having everything you could possibly need right there in camp. So we come in, we get situated, and all you have to do every day is walk up to the highest point, a big hill right behind us, and we've got the best vantage point in that whole entire valley. Now the good and the bad part about having a good vantage point, you can see for a long way. The bad part is, well, sometimes you spot bears five, six miles out, and that's a long walk there and a long walk back. But I can promise you, some of these bears are absolutely worth it. So every day we'd go up there, and it's important to bring spotting scopes, to bring your binoculars, to bring snacks, to bring things to keep you busy. And we literally had about three stations set up where we would walk and switch stations. So everybody was constantly looking, glassing new country, and not getting too bored out of the deal. Well, when you're in Alaska, you can't get bored. And I couldn't imagine having more fun than going with someone like Ben, who is such an incredible hunter. Now, I've hunted with Ben for years in South Dakota. We have killed some nice, beautiful whitetails. Big whitetails, mule deer, decoy to man. But it was awesome being able to go to a place like Alaska and making this dream come true and knowing that we have got a great shot on a big brown bear. This segment was brought to you by Boss Buck. For the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market, choose Boss Buck Feeders. Now you're getting serious. We 
Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Hard-Hitting Eastern Arrows, Golden Triangle Whitetail, Winchester, the American Legend, National Deer Alliance, HHA Sports, the leader in single pin technology. Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. Convergent Hunting Solutions, where experience, innovation, and passion meet. Sportsman's Alliance, protecting hunting from coast to coast. Engel Coolers, the original high-performance cooler company. And Moose Utility Division, your leader in ATV UTV accessories. So the last time I was in Alaska, I had an unbelievable time. I was able to get within 60 yards of a beautiful blonde brown bear. Made a great shot, had a follow-up shot, and you know what? Walking up on a brown bear, it's a pretty cool feeling. So I knew that if we spotted a good one, Ben was going to have so much fun. But what was interesting, I was the cameraman on this trip. Now, it's been years since I've been a cameraman but I'm always filming, I'm still producing, I'm still editing all the time, so I thought him and I are gonna go, he's up first, I'm gonna be the one filming, and then we spotted a huge brown bear. Oh, we just got out of the tent and then spotted two bears right here from camp. We've got one over here, there's another one over there, that one's moved a long way. This one's staying nice and close. It's staying put, it's not close, it's a long way off, but uh, I'm gonna try to get a little video film, see what it's doing. Looks awesome. We got lucky in that we, our optics allowed us to spot our targets so far away. It was about two and a half miles out and we were able to judge the wind on how we could make uh, a, a, a pretty steady approach on the bear. So we threw our stuff together and, and we, we hit, the, hit the tundra. Now I am talking a absolute giant boar. We didn't know exactly how big it was, but we saw it from such a long way off. And Ryan looked at us like, are you sure you want to go for this? And we said, absolutely. It was fun because we were going after this boar that we knew was a, a target. But on the way, we were stopping and we were glassing these sows and cubs and, and getting some filming in. So, so that was really fun. Made it really exciting. All the pieces have to align to create one success. And so you don't get in a rush. Try and make sure your gear is in order before you start, the, start a stock. Um, obviously, you've got your target in sight. It's up to him to cooperate to a certain degree. In order to get out in front of him, you gotta make sure you predict where he's moving. And that's what happened on our stock. So as we passed the sow and cubs, we got closer and closer. And finally, we set up on this big brown bear. Now Ben, he has got nerves of steel. I'm pretty sure I'd have been shooting the first time I had just a slight broadside shot. Yep, I'm gonna take him, just because I'm always afraid something's gonna happen. But I'm rolling on the camera and I'm thinking, I'm not gonna rush this because I'm getting beautiful footage. The wind was just howling, but it was in our favor. So we were set up and him and Ryan were in front of me and they just kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm filming and filming and filming. And this bear is just on the crest. Now I was a little bit higher, so I had a better view. And Ben was waiting for just the perfect shot. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews Archery. Field and stream, where traditions begin. ScoutLookWeather.com. Download the free ScoutLook hunting app for your smartphone. 
Range Master Trailers, luxury gone rugged. Master Hand Milling, revolutionizing the range. Reinhardt, the best archery targets in the world. Garmin, enhance your outdoor adventures. Winchester, the American legend. S4 gear. Bino Dock, what a cup holder should be. SCI, first for hunters. EOTech, transform your arsenal. Waterhole, create water sources that attract and hold wildlife. And Boss Buck, for the most user friendly and dependable feeder on the market. Now you're getting serious. This segment was brought to you by SCI, protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation. SCI is first for hunters, but first can't stay first without you. Join like your way of life depends on it. Now there are no amenities when you go up to Alaska. You are staying in a tent, you're eating freeze-dried meals, and it is roughing it in every single form of the word. You have no cell phone service up there. You are completely on your own. And for the next 10 days, the only thing you're thinking about is hunting brown bear. And that's exactly what Ben and I were doing. Okay, so we've got a bear spotted. It looks like a huge boar. We're gonna gather our stuff as fast as possible, get everything together. We've got probably close to three miles to get on this bear, but it looks huge. I mean, I'd never even, you know, seen brown bears until we got out here. And, and, and they all look big to me. Even the sows look big. So, you know, Ian, we seen this boar and he was, you know, he was a big bear. We got closer to the target, we started realizing it wasn't just any bear, it was the bear. And so over uh, a, a few minutes, we started realizing this was, a, this was gonna be a critical stock. Um, this bear was just big, you know, the, there is, they are big naturally, but this one had been alive a long time and put a lot of weight on. So we, t we wanted to take this thing really serious. Well, you know, we'd gotten, I think, around 220 yards or so from the bear. And uh, Ryan had said, you know, this is a big bear. He's an old bear. We knew he was smart. And, you know, we probably could have gotten closer, but with bears this age and this, this old, it, you know, you don't want, you, your margin for error is real small. So we didn't want to get, you know, too close and maybe spook the bear. So I think we crawled into like around 200 yards and, and he was kind of on a ridge line a little bit. We couldn't really see his whole body. So we just sat there and, and, and we were patient, waiting for a good shot. And eventually he fed our, our direction, I would say probably 20 or 30 yards and gave us a nice broadside shot. Squeezed the trigger, made an absolutely perfect shot. I followed the bear, he put one more in him, almost the exact same hole on the opposite side, and this bear went down. And you know what? You want to talk about an awesome feeling? I'm positive it was just as much fun to be behind the camera as it was the last time I was in front of the camera. Before I knew it, you know, I seen his feet go up in the air. And that was and sick. Then that's when, you know, the adrenaline hit, and I was super excited and pumped, and I think we all were. We walked up on this bear and he was a monster. He had a head like I have never seen before, well over 10 foot, and truly probably the biggest brown bear I will ever see. So now I was up hunting. Unfortunately, we worked and we worked and we worked but we never did see another bear to go after. We'd see bear five, six, seven miles out, but they were just too far to make the trek in one day, and there's too many points where you're gonna lose the bear. So unfortunately on this trip, we just got one bear down, but I can promise you, if you're looking for one bear, 
this was the bear to get. I was just happy to be on a bear hunt, you know, and, and to take any bear for that matter. And, and I, I mean, I, all I can say is that I got super lucky and just extremely fortunate and thankful that, you know, to run into a bear like this. And I, guess, I mean, that's all you can really say is pretty much luck to, to run into something like that. And to actually come out here and experience all this, it's, I guess I'm just super thankful.